and welcome to another episode of the Mosa Spotlight Podcast. Today I'm just joined by John, and today our guest is Carolina Ketakuri. I got that right there, didn't I? Yes. You now do. Awesome. Well done. Hey, I'm terrible with names. So, uh, Carolina, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. Thank you, Andrew and John, for having me here. So, my name is Carolina Ketakuri. I'm from Finland, and that's why I have such a difficult name to pronounce. Uh, I'm modern work leader at a Finnish company called Medlake, and I also am Office MVP at Microsoft MVP in Office Apps and Services. Awesome, and I think you've been an MVP since a couple of years now, hasn't it? Yeah, it, 2019. Yeah. yeah, yeah, since December 2019. <laughs> so, what's your specialism in Office Apps and Services? I focus on Teams user adoption and modern work, which basically means that we try to help organizations to utilize all of these communication and collaboration tools in M365 as efficient ways as possible. So basically, awesome. uh, developing teamwork and internal communications with help of Teams, SharePoint, Yammer, Viva Connections, all of those cool, cool new things. So awesome. So let's dive straight into your current work in history. So can you tell us about what you're currently doing now and we'll basically go from there. Yeah. So basically I'm the leader for our Monovog business unit. So we have a team of 16 people who are concentrated on improving teamwork, um, processes, communications, doing internet. We talk a lot about employee experience as well. A uh, lot about Viva Connections, Viva Insights. For example, yesterday I was at uh, Microsoft Finland and we had a workshop for several customers about how to how to improve employee experience with the help of Viva Insights, which is I, I think a pretty hot topic at the moment. Yeah, I mean I need to start looking at Viva Insights. It's something I'm not really dived into at the minute. Too busy looking at you know good old legacy exchange. <laughs> you know that's, that's what even though like it is the modern world and you think everyone probably would move to exchange online during COVID. No, there's still plenty of big organisations out there using legacy exchange. That's what yeah. I'm going to work. Yeah, I've noticed the uh, the Viva conversation in the past year has just grown, hasn't it? You've got people like yourself, Sarah Fennessy, um, Zoe Wilson in the UK, like all and yeah, all on the Viva like on the Viva like journey, I guess, and the and the bandwagon since it since it was announced like last year. But yeah, I haven't really done too much in it myself, um, to be honest. But it it looks like a really good area for um, companies and and customers to onboard, have a great employee experience. <laughs> and, and growth of skills as well. It's like published just a year and a couple of months ago, like in February 2021, and now it's a huge thing. I think for, for many of the customers. And um, I think what's interesting in it, it's that it's not just like new solutions or applications, but it also tries to have people first and, and go with the employee experience first and not just the IT and technology first, which is interesting for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So let's wind back uh, a little bit and let's go through kind of your journey into IT. So how did you kind of start in getting, and getting into it? How did you get into the IT industry? Yeah, so I think I've always been like a bit of a nerd. Like I've never coded or done anything developer stuff, but um, I've, I've always been interested in technology and uh, how to use it in the best possible way. And um, in university, I studied organizations and leadership and management. And then I uh, went on working with, a, with this um, large Finnish organization and um, I uh, did reporting and, and stuff like that. And then they had this uh, huge internet project coming, up, coming on. So they were using on-premises SharePoint 2007 and they were then updating it to 2013, I think. And then I was like, pick me, I want to test this thing, this sounds interesting. and. Uh, then, like, I fell in love with SharePoint. Someone asked me. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and and then, I, then I went and uh, worked, uh, started working as a consultant. So, of course, at the moment or 
at least after our teams has been published. My work has lots of more to do with teams than actually SharePoint, but it all started with on-premises SharePoint. Wow, <laughs> someone has to start somewhere, John, don't it? SharePoint is what it is. <laughs> no, I mean, it's what SharePoint is, it's one of them technologies that I've always kind of avoided, but you know, you, you can't, I can't get away from it, so I, I have to try and embrace it now. It's something mm -hmm. that I've, I've always wanted. SharePoint, SK, that, that's me, I'm running out that door, I don't want to touch it. Um, but now, I mean, we've had quite a few guests on in the past, they've all come from a, like a SharePoint background. It does, mm -hmm. as, um, what's now, as, as Tracy Vandershave said, it's the gateway to consumption for all other um, Office 365 products. Yeah. Because all of the document management actually is in SharePoint, even though you would use Teams, still the documents are in SharePoint too. So it's pretty difficult to actually stay away from SharePoint, even now. Agreed, 100%. I had a customer the other day, and this is going to shock you. They use Exchange um, Online, they use, they're going to be using Intune, um, Endpoint Manager and everything but they are hiding SharePoint and OneDrive for their users. What? And they're using Teams. They don't want people to know that they're using SharePoint. Any particular reason why? It's quite... They're using iManage, another, uh, another, another document repository. Okay. Interesting choice. Yeah, it's just it's a bit weird. Like, just because at the back end, when they, get, when they share files and stuff, it just saves into, their, into, into, into like OneDrive SharePoint, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's an um, interesting choice, but it's out, it's out there and people aren't using it. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember having a customer uh, quite some time ago, um, just basically wanted to block OneDrive. Didn't want people to sync files to OneDrive, store in the cloud. And this is when um, it was actually called SkyDrive at the time. I mean, to mm. block access. Oh, there. I understand. I understand. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Back then, obviously, it was quite scary. People weren't going to the cloud, but when obviously SkyDrive was around, yeah, this customer, you know, there was no easy way of blocking the application, and especially when they was using um, the very first you know, versions of Pro, Pro, Pro Plus. And it's like, okay, how the hell do I do this? It's like there's no documentation how to do it. So I had to get down to the app locker policies and group policy and, and from group policy to lock it out. It was, that was yeah, like I mean, a horrible experience. I've heard some firms in the in the past going like, oh. Um, yeah, the, um, this client or this, yeah, this, these people, these client and partners don't want us saving our saving our stuff in the cloud and in OneDrive and stuff, but they're using Office three six five themselves. <laughs> but yeah, adoption and understanding, I think, and coming away from that um, on premise um, point of view. Mm. But anyway, back to you, Carolina. <laughs> no, but actually, we are on point because it's so much easier to, for example, disable applications. That, uh, or say that you are not allowed to use these ones, uh, then it's to really implement those things and train people and coach people and do user adoption and, and really do more work. And that's why it's this, this work, even though we are working for IT, mostly we are working in, in technology, but it's more about helping people to use these tools and not about how to like click some button into admin center and disable things or or apply licenses or or something like that. It's like yeah, what think, it works about people. I think once once something's implemented, is I think the single biggest um, advantage for, for companies that are adopting Microsoft 365 is adoption of users and. Mm. I think once uh, once people have an adoption team in and uh, an adoption plan together, like people can really make full use of the Microsoft 365 suite rather than just just doing what they know. If you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah, back to where where you are. <laughs> so you was you was in college, university, and and then kind of went over to, over over to SharePoint, and kind of what happened from from that point onwards. So basically, um, I started to create these team pages for our team at, at, in the organization. And then we improved our, for example, document management, uh, the ways we shared news in our team. And then I thought, this is, this is super nice, this is very interesting. I want to do this for a living. And then I changed to consultancy, uh, to work for consultancy companies. And um, first, like for the 
uh, first couple of years, it was basically just doing internet suite with SharePoint. So bringing uh, companies to the cloud, uh, they were still in on-premises on back then, and it was mostly focused on internal communication suite with SharePoint and internet. But then when teams came 2016, 2017, uh, slowly things became began to change, like maybe more away from the internet and move towards the teamwork development and how to use teams efficiently with your teams and projects. And this is where I'm now. So <laughs> basically helping you, organizations. How did you find that move into consultancy? Didn't like was it interesting? Did you find it hard? Was it interesting? Was and obviously um, coming into it as as a, as a as a as a woman within tech, how did you how 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 was it different? Dif how was it different to what you were doing before? Mm. Mm. Very good question because, for example, now in 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 our team we have several people who have been working, for example, in internal communications in large organizations, and then they have done the jump from. In inside companies to consultant to consultants, but I didn't actually remember. It was like almost ten years ago. <laughs> I I don't remember having such a like shock or or something like that because I was so enthusiastic about that I was able to go to many several companies and work with the different customers, work with different organizations and help them to take th things forward. So, so the possibility to really affect things and make things better was really excited, exciting for me. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm quite the same going from like a managed service to, I, went, I, went, I used to work for a managed service company before I went into consultancy, which is again, nearly 10 years ago now, bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> but like, before I don't, I think I've only worked for an internal IT company like once in my career for like I think it's like a year or so. So like I've always worked for different different customers um, rather than just rather than just an internal IT team. So mm -hmm. yeah, I get what you mean. I can't really remember that that step myself either, to be honest. Um, but Andrew's come from from the same type of background, haven't you? Consultancy and I mean, uh, my job with consultancy came via um, working on a particular customer. Um, I was working for uh, Phoenix Group, the ICM, when I, f when I first joined them. Um, I was basically just an on-site engineer at this particular customer. And I was then, I wanted to make the change to actually start doing a little bit more, going on the consulting side, but I couldn't do it without actually having to leave ICM and then go back to them. Um, because, I wasn't, because I was so uh, ingrained into this customer and such a, a, a Know, part of the whole workings of the IT systems, the only way I could go into consultancy was have to leave this particular uh, customer and then rejoin the business. So I left for like six months, um, went to a particular like a learning company, started doing some more certification, doing a bit of work for different customers. Then I ended up rejoining um, ICM and then actually started doing more consultancy and actually going out to customers and doing doing more implementations. So it wasn't, you know, a seamless transition for me. I had to basically leave where I was, where I was quite happy, um, to basically try and you know, progress my career. Was that learn just out of subject? Is it like a learning company? Was that one of those where they um, guaranteed you to do exams and training, and then got you to do a bit of work at the same time? Yeah, the one I work for, they don't exist anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, the, my my story about them, well, well, I'll be on here forever because like, I will get on my soapbox and have a bit of a rant about oh, them. Oh no, but, don't want that. Let's no, move swiftly on. It's just one one of the things you know. Everyone in their career history has you know made a step. Thinking the grass is green, but on that particular instance, for me, it wasn't. It wasn't the right move for me. I end up you know not being happy and that, having to leave. So it's just it's just one of them things. It's the only job I've ever actually walked out on, and just okay. like packed up packed my stuff and walked out, and then you know, phoned up my previous uh, line manager. Went, you know, isn't it jobs going? And got back into ICM. Uh, so Carolina, like you've 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 got into your job, and you know, obviously you're really enjoying consultancy. I'm guessing. Um, so what uh, what made you start within the community um, side of things? Mm. Actually, it was, um, I think, three, over three years ago, 
2019, in, in the beginning of 2019, I was working with a uh, in a company and my colleague was an MVP actually. So Timo Pertila, who, who is, um, he's in the Scottish summit. So say hello to Timo for me. I'll say hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and um, Timo, uh, he blogs, write blogs a lot, but he also uh, spoke in, in conferences. And then he wrote our company Yammer. We had Yammer in, in that company. And he wrote that, hey, there's this uh, SharePoint Saturday in London coming. And uh, who, who wants to join me? So, so please send your papers in there. And um, I, I had been speaking to a couple of user groups before. And then I was like, maybe I can try. <laughs> and uh, I sent papers to the SharePoint Saturday in London. And then I like, forgot the whole thing. Until I got an email that like congratulations you've been accepted, and I had I had no idea actually uh, about what I put myself into because I had no idea like uh, what kind of conferences they were and um, what kind of presentations should should be should, should be there. But uh, then I went there. I was like I think I was super super nervous, but I have had my presentation. And uh, it went well, maybe, I hope. And um, I also met uh, many, 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 many community friends uh, there for the first time. And then I, I remember that there was, um, I don't remember her name, but what one person. And then, then they asked that, do I have a Twitter account? And I said, no, I don't have Twitter. And they were like, you should have. And then I opened my Twitter account in, in the SharePoint Saturday London, and then I actually like started being active on Twitter and LinkedIn and joined more conferences because I actually uh, realized that I enjoy speaking live in, in conferences. And yeah, here I am now. We are online, uh, but still speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, funny enough, uh, at the workshop the other day, um, which I mentioned earlier, they, they were saying how, um, bad Microsoft support is like in terms of like the first line when you when you go and create a service request. Mm. I was just like, what if you have, and, and, and it's a point of Twitter. I think Twitter is, is like so useful within the community, like even finding out stuff, networking, need yeah. if you need any help and stuff. I was like, just one of you, just get active on Twitter. And then if you have any yeah. issue or anything, go and find the region, like the regional like lead on it or the, the program team or something like reach out that way. And I yeah. guarantee you will get your answers a lot quicker than um, going and getting a, a service request. I mean, don't like, obviously don't get a service request for like, you know, simple like silly things like, you know, uh, can't reset passwords, like very like blanket example. But like, if you've got any issues, like you think, go to, go, go on Twitter, start reaching out to these people because people want to help. And, yeah. and I think I think they're doing it. I hope they, 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 they seem to take it on board. <laughs> So one thing I wanted to kind of ask you um, off the back of that was, obviously you said you like to, you like to speak in roles, you like to speak within. What would you give? Um, what advice would you give to somebody, say, ho who's hosting and um, doing their first in-person event in two days' time? <laughs> <laughs> so, like speaking for the first time. Yes. Yeah. In two days. That's me. I'm, I'm speaking at the um, Scottish Summit for, um, for the first time in two days. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Well, actually, um, I like to be well prepared. So I like to make my presentation and think about what I'm going to say beforehand. And for my first presentations, I actually wrote all my notes. Like I had a work document, which is like 10 pages long, where I wrote all of the things I want to say. And it was, of course, because um, English isn't my first language. So it's also a new new situation to be talking and, and speaking professionally in another language. So maybe my advice would be that be well prepared. Hopefully you have your presentation ready. <laughs> Doing it after on. this one. <laughs> so my wife said to me yesterday, go, have you done have you done the presentation? I was like, yeah. <laughs> have you gone through it yet? No, um, I'm, I've, I'm, 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 I've only got like a 25 minute thing. So I'm, I am well, um, com I'm very confident of being able to just, just go off and talk. Like I don't, 
I'm not really too nervous or anything. So like, I think I'll be fine. I've done. I've done the, the talk, I think, two times. Like, um, I, I've done it two or three times now, like, virtually. So, and those ones were a lot longer, so I've just had to cut it down. Yeah. So I think I'll, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> uh, one more tip. People love candy. So if you have something you can share and give away to the people, they will be super happy. I'll go get some Haribo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I used to run my user groups, I was giving my Xboxes, so it's quite easy. That was the... <laughs> I'll go get some Harry Bows um, out to people. Like, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure I have two people in the audience. There's there's a lot there's a lot more um, talks than mine at that point. <laughs> but then they are super interested in your your talk. Yeah, uh, maybe. Hopefully, I know I've got a friend who's gonna a couple of friends that are gonna come along to to my one. So. At least I have that, a couple of happy faces. It all depends on your, on your content. I mean, when I did my um, Office 365 Pro Plus session uh, at Office 365 Engage in the, in the Netherlands, I expected to be, to be about two people in the room because it's such a boring topic. But no, I had literally like 30, 40 people there asking questions. It's like, okay, I didn't expect this. I mean, I've done this talk a few times in the UK and not, not really interested. But then I had quite a few people um, when, when I was there. I was asking questions and attendance like completely different experience but you know as long as you know your content and are happy in delivering it and long as you've got like say say cue points as well then you know it's quite easy to do just be mm. confident john just throw yourself in the deep end i'll be all right and you like, swim. would you kind of like recommend like say like would you have like a notepad in front of you for for a cue point like if you need to like if you, if there's anything that you need to remember I think it's a good idea. If you if you are not sure, like very, very sure that you know what you want to say and you can keep your time, then you can have like notepad or iPad or like some like written. Notes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, because you... with mine, I've got some like I've, on my my talk, I've got some kind of like some um, compliance um, things that I need to try to remember and I'm not going to remember them. <laughs> So I was like, if I just write them down, then I'll be all right. Everything else I can fly through. <laughs> yeah, so like whatever makes you confident. Okay, cool. If you want to have notes, you can have notes. So people listening who haven't spoken yet, you're getting some some tips firsthand from Andrew and Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you go to the toilet before you're uh, speaking. It sets a lot as well. <laughs> Top tip. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just want to touch on, obviously, I've seen that. Obviously, you do a lot of work with uh, women in tech as a student ambassador. Do you want to explain how you kind of got into that, and you know what drives you in doing more in that space? Yeah. So, for example, I've been um, um, participated in the Office Insiders. I hear my voice. Uh, so, I've been uh, participating in my uh, in the Office Insiders blog, for example, and then uh, yeah, this uh, Office. In Women in Tech Student Ambassadors Network. And um, for me, I think it's mostly that women tend to think IT careers and technical careers that, for example, you have to be a developer or you have to be a very technical person. But I'm not. I, I don't code. I, I'm not super technical. And I want to show an example that what kind of different roles and different careers you can have within IT, even though you would don't want to code. I mean, that's something that we said a lot, isn't it, Andrew? Like the IT industry is like, it's so big. Like it isn't just coding, it isn't just adoption, it isn't just sales, it isn't just like, it could be anything. You've got IT recruiters, you've got IT, absolutely everything that <laughs> nowadays and I, I, I think kind of tar tarring everyone as like a super nerdy um um coder is I think we need to get away from this stigma i think the it, i think the it crowd never helped us but <laughs> no. so let's well, see, you have to find your own path so, so you have to find that what you're interested in and not not, not like copy others or do something just because uh, others seem it valuable. Like you, you should find something that really interests you and something you are super enthusiastic about. And then it maybe comes naturally. 
That's one of the reasons we do this podcast, because that way we're sharing people's stories who have come from all different walks of life. I say, you know, we've had so many different people on and so many different ways they've got into IT and different roles they've actually done that it's nice to obviously hear and see how people have basically moved through the IT industry and transitioned into, into different roles. Um, I know, obviously, when we had um, Ann Michaels on, she was the was it, uh, product marketing manager for Microsoft Teams, and now she's moved over to become the you know, Microsoft C COO of Microsoft Austria. So, mm -hmm. you know, career progressions and, and, and ways of you know navigating your career life, you know, is a big thing as long as you're happy doing the role that you're doing and then basically see yourself then moving to something else then go for it you know take that opportunity because you know the it market is ever changing there's so many different products so many different name changes i mean i mean if i had to write down every single name change microsoft has done since i've started in it i mean i'll be there forever writing that list but I think we'll be forever um, writing a list down for name changes this year, to be fair, in yeah, the last exactly. 12 months, even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, as long as you're, like I say, my, my thing is, if you're happy in what you're doing and, and see a natural progression into where you want to be, then go for it, take it. As long as you've got, you know, a very supportive manager, then, you know, the world's your oyster. I mean, I've, I've now been at Fujitsu, um, like, just over two years and it's, it's probably my longest role that i've had since i worked um on site at a local company so where, where i live now um as a, a desktop stroke network engineer um because i enjoy the company i work for they're very supportive my manager is very supportive and there's opportunities for me to do you know things i'm passionate about like this podcast for example and they're also then taking that you know into working with Fujitsu. So I've recently become a women business network champion. So I've got my first call about that in a couple of weeks uh, nice. to see how I can start, you know, doing more of this, what I'm doing now, but also within Fujitsu as well. So, yeah, I mean, we've had a, we certainly had a, uh, an interesting 12 months, haven't we? Like it's just, as you said, speaking to loads of different people, different backgrounds. I think you're the first, first person from Finland. Yes. Yes, I think the first person from Finland. We've had a couple from from Sweden, um, but not not Finland. Finland is great. We just, <laughs> start, start, what we need to do, John, is get a big ball and start ticking off all the different countries of all the people we've spoken to, and that's it. Start yeah, we've done, we we done well. We've done South Africa. We've obviously done the US. We've done Holland. We've done Scotland, England. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So the one I want to do, John, is just obviously time time zone is uh, Austria because there's quite a few good MVPs down in Austria and good women in tech down there. Yeah, I think we try to make one work, haven't we? But it's just been a bit, been a bit hard to to get that that time zone in. But I'm sure we'll we we'll do it. We've been, we've been doing um calls. We've been doing podcasts about eleven o'clock at night sometimes. We had one scheduled for eleven o'clock the other night. So, so it's, an, it's a round the clock job we're doing here. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely a passion of love, that's it, for what we do. So um, talking about obviously women in tech, um, what's it like um, in Finland for women in tech? Is there great good support from businesses? Because obviously you know, me and John know what the UK is like and we spoke to different women from all different countries. Um, so what's it like in you know, your region? Mm. Finland is um, pretty advanced in like all of, all of the sectors in in life but but uh, actually uh, finland is uh, pretty at once but what it what it comes to equality and um at my, at my work yes we, we have all, all of these women in tech meetings and and committees etc and there are lots of women who who like to join to join those and and see it see those useful but in like general level uh we are very equal in in Finland, and for example, at my work, I don't see any obstacles or or challenges specifically for for women. But of course, since we are in the IT industry, uh, normally women are the minority. But for example, in in our team, in our modern work team, we have um, fifty fifty. So we have fifty percent women and uh, fifty percent men, and also in our company. In our management board, we have half of people are women and half half, half of people are men. So at the okay. moment, we are pretty great. Do you know what? That's pretty in line with what we've heard from the people over in um, Sweden that we spoke to. Yeah. That was um, Sarah Lanaquist. 
Um, who was at the Scottish Summit as well? She said exactly the same thing, like roughly, yeah. I think it's got a, a 50-50 split. And yeah. It's, the same uh, with uh, Jonah Anderson as well. She said the same thing. Yeah. So you guys in Scandinavia did amazing. <laughs> And we are also, uh, also like, uh, I think Finland is the happiest country in the world for like five, fifth time in a row. Oh, wow. You haven't stopped smiling the whole time. So I think, yeah, yeah that says a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I've been smiling a lot, but I'm sure when Andrew does a screen grab of this ep episode and puts it on Twitter, I'm going to be looking weird. <laughs> Dude, that, he always, yeah. When he does a screen grab on Twitter or LinkedIn, I'm eyes closed, looking the other, other way, like, yeah, cheers. I'm trying to catch you now, your eyes closed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but now, it, it, it's good that, you know, it, it'd be nice to know exactly and get more information about how, um, obviously, the Scandinavian region is doing with women in tech and try and, you know, take that and, you know, start spreading that a little bit more around mm. the different regions in Europe and try and, you know, improve how everyone basically operates because, you know, we have to change how things are. Um, me and John can't do it by ourselves. And you know, I'd like to try and be an advocate for more promoting, you know, the good things that can be done. So mm -hmm. organizations can take that on board. And I think it's, it's also partly a general organizational culture thing, because in Finland, uh, we are very unhierarchic. So we have very low hierarchies. We don't have that like strict manager employee uh, divisions and we are very like open and um, flat within our organizations. And that's also that helps uh, people from from different backgrounds or for, for example, for, for women to get get gain those steps and then go 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 forward with their careers because there's no like those very strict constructions within within organizations you don't really have these like these meetings um, within your organization for like women in tech so obviously like champion boards and that kind of do you leave the means feeling you know a plan has been created and obviously there's things then being actioned after that because obviously you know people do have obviously a lot of meetings around Let, let's do this let's do that and then, I mean, I've, I've seen it, nothing ever really happens. So, mm -hmm. I mean, people do a lot of talking about it, but then there's no action to basically follow that conversation. Mm. Yeah, I think um, we have this, like, one of the active uh, women in tech organizations in, in Finland, uh, they have lots of, like, these di different events. And I, I like that they have different um, speakers from different backgrounds and uh, Give an example for, for, for different ways of working, different ways you can, for example, ways of uh, careers in organizations. So I think the um, example, uh, giving, giving different examples has a huge power in, in, in the future and for the attendees of those, those groups. So it's maybe not only about that you can take action in, in your organizations, but those attendees in those conferences and, and sessions can be inspired by themselves and maybe believe in their sale, themselves a bit more and then do something themselves as well. Awesome. Cool. So you mentioned obviously about the community and you know, people that have inspired you. Is there any more people that have inspired you? So, I mean, as a, obviously not just uh, females but also males as well that help you you know people that you you look up to and you know, you know i would like to try and you know, do more of more conferences like them or i'd like to basically you know do more content that basically pushes you along i mean is there are people that kind of like drive you and inspire you to do that well i think there are like so many so many people in the community you can look up to and i think like most of them are in scottish summit I'm so sad I'm not able to be there, but maybe next year. So, uh, for example, that, this is the last one. Is this the last one? I saw it. I saw him put it on Twitter the other day. It's a little bit, I can't believe it. Like the amount of amazing people they got there and stuff behind it and the, the event. Apparently, it's going to be the last one. The, the hope shocking. Yeah, hopefully, this goes like um, so well this weekend that they go, ah, we, we've got to do another one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, actually, I couldn't make my schedules fit fit for for this one, so I'm really sad about that. But um, back to the question. Um, for example, uh, Timo Pertila, that my ex colleague who inspired me to start speaking conferences, he blogs one. He writes one one blog post every week. And he has he has he has been doing that for like several years now, and that's something I would love to do, but I just I, I can't I, I don't have the time and I don't have the like self discipline to write blog posts every week. You know what I do one post a month at the moment for Practical Three Six Five, and I find that so hard <laughs> just <laughs> once a month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be great as well. I mean, and, uh, it was a bit like Tracy when she was doing, you know, one post per day for a whole entire year. <laughs> Mad yes. I mean, that, that, that was some crazy. <laughs> and um, yeah, of course, um, Amanda Sterner, who is uh, also MVP from from Sweden, and um, she actually um, had a baby last year, and then she's an, I think, an excellent example of like mother mother thinker who has who have careers, and also a great example of maybe women in tech in in Sweden. Because yeah, the um, environment in Sweden is a bit similar to, to Finland, so maybe there's also one one great candidate for you to interview if you want to. <laughs> to be to be to be honest though, she actually filled out the form to actually um, come on the show, so she is on my list of people to reach out to probably in the next cycle at some point. So yes, Amanda will be on the po this podcast at some point because I think she works for Avanade as well, doesn't she? Uh, she changed or, jobs. Or, or did work a couple of, Yeah, uh, a couple of months ago she changed to something else. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's working. That's, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I mean, th there is so many inspirational people in the community. I say, like, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if the if I didn't meet in, in, inspirational people to start with. I say, when I got into the community. Um, you know, I was basically very much deep within Skype for Business, which obviously was Microsoft Link when I started. Um, mm. And I, all the guys that basically I started getting, commun getting in touch with, then got part of the UC Architects podcast, all them people inspired me to basically do what I'm doing. And I've kind of like tried to push on more and just, you know, be involved. Um, and like I can see a lot of them people have like, like left the community and some are still, you know, heavily going and like, you know, mm. They're talking about an MVP for like 15 plus years. I mean, that, that's some hard work, that is. That's huge. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I've mean, done three years, that, that's enough for me. <laughs> I mean, I think it's just good, like, the amount of, like, different people, like, you've become quite good friends with people now, like, just just from, oh. from meeting the, the one time, like, so, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's definitely something that, I, I think greatly benefits yourself as well as hopefully other people <laughs> from what we're doing. So yeah. Um, so we spoke about kind of like your past. We spoke about what you're doing now. What's the what's the aspirations for the future for yourself? Actually, now when we started started talking about blocking, so I really actually would love to write blog posts. So maybe in the future I should try to find time to write those blog posts. But um, of course I want to keep on doing all these uh, super nice things with the community, speaking at conferences, and I really am waiting for uh, to see everyone live again. So that's why I'm I'm so sad that I can't be in the Scottish summit because that would have been like the first time in such a long time than I would have seen every, every, everyone live. But yeah, next time. How about Commsverse? Are you going to go down to Commsverse or? No, uh, because I'm on holiday as well. <laughs> <laughs> South Coast Summit, can you make it to that one? <laughs> no, but I will be in um, ESPC. In oh, Copenhagen. yeah. But Is that the European like... SharePoint? Yeah. Yeah. That's the end, of, end of November, isn't it, I believe? Yeah, in, in Copenhagen. Yeah, that's uh, like. If you can make it to share, if you make it to the South Coast Summit, me and John will be there oh, in cool. some capacity. I mean, I'm, I'm a track lead, and John's also a track lead for another area. I'm doing workshop. I'm doing a workshop. If you want to come along to the AVD and Endpoint Manager workshop on a Friday, I'll be hosting <laughs> that. 
<laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there, John, but I'm not coming to your workshop, unfortunately. I'm going to go to the security one, boy, Pete Rising. Uh, <laughs> Trey <Trailer. Yeah. laughs> I really don't interest me. So. But um, now, I mean, going to conferences is, is uh, you know, quite an important thing. Uh, I believe that mm. going to conferences is a good way of meeting people, networking. Um, and the more people that we see at conferences that, you know, are from different backgrounds as well, not just obviously male, mm. female, obviously from, a, you know, different cultural backgrounds, obviously helps, you know, increase the awareness, increases people wanting to attend because, again, it's that thing that if you can see someone on a stage that looks like you, speaks like you, then it mm. kind of attracts you to obviously then, you know, inspire to be like that person as well. I mean, obviously you don't want to be just like them, but you want to be that your own version of yourself. But, yeah. you know, obviously they've made the pathway for you to, you know, start doing, you know, things that you, you might never thought you'd see yourself doing. I mean, I never thought I'd see myself doing um, public speaking, but, you know, I went and did it, I enjoy it and I'll, I'll continue doing it. And until we are. I think something I said to you about public speaking anyway, as a consultant or architect, whatever you, you, you kind of role is, it, when you get to this level, you're talking to customers all the time. Like I'm doing chalk and talks most of the time. I'm doing handovers, which I go through. Like there's no real difference in my like, in my opinion. I've been I've been in a room of like 20, 30 people who are just they're customers who kind of ask you and grill you so many times on loads of different subjects and questions and expect you not to know absolutely everything so <laughs> going into going into a, a session where everything's on my terms i know exactly what needs to be said and the only questions that you'll probably get are related to your session i, I feel it's more comfortable yeah. than than other experiences i think it's like maybe a different viewpoint so with the customer you have this uh, viewpoint of the customer and you you for example know their um, what kind of licenses they have and what kind of employees they have and, and what's their situation at the moment and then when you have a presentation in a conference then you have to make the presentation very general level and yeah. it, it can be like very deep dive into in something but the viewpoint is a um, bit bit different and uh, actually, that's also something I enjoy about speaking in conferences because I learn a lot while I'm doing my presentations because I, because I have to think about things uh, from a different angle when I'm planning my presentations. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I'm just looking at the time. I think we're very close to wrapping up. So uh, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do something di completely different, John. <gasps> so. Yeah, we'll put a bit of spam in the works. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, 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 what I'm going to ask you a question. So what would you think your big idea is to obviously help uh, improve women in tech globally? How to improve tech? Yeah, how to improve awareness, improve how mm -hmm. things are done. What, what would your big idea be? I think my idea is, is to start, uh, start talking more about people using technology and, and how people should use it and not that much about like all the different buttons you have in some, some applications. So make the technology more human. Okay. Yeah. I think kind of like, again, we're going off a bit of topic here from the end, but like, I think what Microsoft do, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a guess we had recently in um, Miri was um, storytelling. I think storytelling is like a perfect way of kind of it is Miri that done storytelling, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, it's Miri. Yeah, you shook my head when I said that. So, <laughs> but like storytelling is like I think such a like cool way of like getting across the um, like ten, like the different new technologies and products coming out from Microsoft. And I think kind of like if we've done that more within the IT industry, and 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 mm -hmm. hopefully we're trying to do similar sort of thing, tell people stories and people listen, and hopefully. That inspires the next um, generation of, um, of of people coming into the world of IT. <laughs> yes, definitely. So yeah, right. Thank you, Carolina, for obviously joining us today. I massively appreciate it. Uh, John, I'll see you on our next episode. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for listening and watching. Thank you. See you later, guys. Thanks for coming, Carolina. <laughs>
Thank you for having me. <laughs> Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. Please make sure you hit that like, share and subscribe button to help us promote our message. You can also follow us on Twitter at MSFT Spotlight and we're also on LinkedIn, the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. And finally, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Big Titan and thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Remote migrations start here. Let MigrationWiz do the work for you. It's fast, secure and 100% SaaS which means you can migrate at any time and from anywhere. Migrate mailboxes, documents, public folders, personal archives, or even Microsoft Teams with just a few clicks. No special training needed and no customer downtime. When the work matters, choose MigrationWiz.